Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jake, and we're going to talk about the basics of float, as well as an interesting case. Hopefully this flows smoothly. All right, all right. Let's talk about gating. No, not this type of gating. Gating refers to these arbitrary black lines where we assign a label on what these cells are based on the forward scatter and side scatter patterns. What is forward scatter, side scatter, you say? Great question. So forward scatter determines how, the greater the forward scatter, the larger the cells. So limbs are small compared to granulocytes, monocytes, and that's why they have small forward scatter. Side scatter determines the complexity or how many granules the cells have. So the more complex the cells, the greater the side scatter. And this is why granulocytes have high side scatter. How do we determine if the cells where we take the flow from, for instance, like the blood or the bone marrow are viable? You, we can use a marker called 7AAD and it will be negative in intact alive cells, but positive in dead or lysed cells. So in this case example, we have 99% viability because it's negative for 7AAD. And so these are viable cells. Now let's talk about these cells. These gated cells are CD3 positive. They have a small, low side scatter. So these are T lymphocytes. Now I had a funny uh, mnemonic for CD5 positive, CD10 negative B cell neoplasms by the mnemonic cold man. Why? Because C in cold is C-L-L-S-L-O and man is mantle cell lymphoma. Now that being said, you have a CD5 positive sizable population that's 24.3%. So is this concerning for CLL, SLL, or mantle cell lymphoma? No, Whoops. not necessarily because on the x-axis you have CD20 and these cells are negative for CD20. These cells are the B, B lymphocytes and they're CD20 positive and almost all, most of them are CD5 negative. You have to remember that traditionally CD5 positive, CD20 negative cells are T lymphocytes. And then I had another mnemonic, CD10 positive, CD5 negative neoplasms uh, that are dung beetles, berry follicular shaped balls. So D stands for DLBCL or diffuse large B cell lymphoma. BER stands for Burkitt. F stands for follicular and ball stands for B acute lymphoblastic leukemia and lymphoma. Now that being said, let's look at this practice case where there are CD20 populations, so these are the B lymphocytes, and then this is CD10, and hardly any of them are CD10 positives. So I'm less concerned for those uh, B cell neoplasms, DLBCL, Burkitt, follicular, BALL. Furthermore, we have a membranous kappa lambda, and there's no restricted population. Kappa is 59%, lambda is 40%. It's important to know that this is membranous kappa lambda because plasma cells nor blasts express membranous kappa lambda. Why is that important to know is if you have a plasma cell myeloma, it may not necessarily show a restricted membranous kappa lambda. That's why if you suspect the plasma cell myeloma, you should get a cytoplasmic kappa lambda. And then for blasts, which are so, so immature, they typically do not express membranous nor cytoplasmic kappa lambda. And one marker for blasts is CD34. And in this practice case, CD34 is 0.4%. So I'm not concerned for for instance, AML. Now we got the basics down. Let's talk about an interesting practice case. Before we begin this practice case, let's talk about normal monocyte markers. It expresses CD11B, CD13, CD14, CD64, and should not express CD15 nor 56. How many monocytes are in the blood? So 
approximately 2 to 8% of white blood cells. So in this practice case, based on the side scatter pattern and the ga uh, gating for monocytes is 41%. That's a lot. 41% of all the cells in the flow from a peripheral blood. Remember, the normal percentage range for monocytes is 2 to 8%. Remember, monocytes express CD11B and 13. So CD11B, the monocytes as shown by the brown cell, brown data points are positive, and CD13 is also positive. This is normal for monocytes, but there's a lot. Remember, monocytes also express CD64. And as we see here, it is the monocytes are CD64 positive, but that's a lot. It's 43.9%. Now, monocytes should not express CD15, but express CD11B. So here, there is CD11B positivity in the monocytes. But there's also some of the monocytes express CD15. So there's aberrant expression by the monocytes of CD15. So monos are identified here. And there's two different populations of monos as highlighted by the blue data points and the green data points. And monos should have CD14, which is highlighted by this blue data point population. But in the green, there's loss of CD14. So in this monocyte subpopulation, there's aberrant loss. Monocytes should also not express CD56. And the monos, as identified by this kind of brown color, these data points show that there's the monocytes express CD56, which is aberrant expression. So. Bottom line is, when you look at a flow, don't just look for B-cell neoplasms. You have to keep your eye open for other entities like monocytic T-cell or other neoplasms. And in this case, with the aberrant expression of the monocytes, monocyte markers, uh, the differential was AML with monocytoid differentiation versus chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. And what would help to kind of cinch the diagnosis, it would be a bone marrow biopsy. So hopefully this helps. If you like Pathagonia, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, bye.